Hi, I'm Cindy Sandoval, Public Affairs Officer for the Pacific Southwest Region. Welcome to Region 8 Roundup. At Coleman National Fish Hatchery, service staff welcome thousands of visitors to the 24th annual Return of the Salmon Festival. People travel from as far away as Southern California and Oregon to view the returning salmon and learn about the hatchery and how service staff support the salmon fishery. The event provides visitors the opportunity to see salmon spawning and egg incubation and also features a mobile aquarium containing salmon at various life stages. The event started in 1990 as an open house but has grown to include other agencies and now hosts over 40 booths dedicated to salmon education, conservation information, and fly fishing demonstrations. It is expected that over 10,000 Fall Run Chinook will return to Coleman this year and service staff will collect eggs and milk from these adults to hatch the next generation of salmon. The eggs collected this year will hatch and grow at Coleman until they are released to venture out to sea and hopefully return to the upper reaches of the Sacramento River in three to five years. To Ruby Lake National Wildlife Refuge where service staff worked with the U.S. Forest Service and others to create the Fort Ruby Interpretive Trail. The trail was designed to share the history of Fort Ruby a military fort constructed in 1862 to protect the overland mail coaches and Pony Express traveling through Nevada. However, after only seven years, the fort was abandoned, and over the decades, the area was used as a ranch, fishing resort, and a trailer park. In 2002, the land was acquired by the service, and staff from Ruby Lake and others began an archaeological investigation to find where the fort's buildings once stood. With the help of the Humboldt Toyabe National Forest, the refuge hosted a volunteer excavation project that worked to uncover structural foundations and artifacts from Fort Ruby. The interpretive trail is roughly a half mile long and leads visitors to the remnants of buildings and onto a reconstructed springhouse and log cabin. Along the way, new interpretive panels explain the fort and its history and the importance of Ruby Valley to local Native American tribes. The service will continue to protect the natural and cultural resources found on refuges and work with others to create interpretive materials for the public. To San Pablo Bay National Wildlife Refuge, where service staff have teamed up with Audubon, California to enhance 400 acres of tidal marsh habitat along Sonoma Creek. Sonoma Creek runs from Sonoma County into San Pablo Bay, but habitat alterations and sediment deposits from gold rush mining caused a rapid buildup of mud, creating stagnant pools over once healthy marsh. With limited water flow in the area, the stagnant pools form algal mats, harbor mosquitoes, and creates an area of dead vegetation. To improve the habitat and aid many marsh-dependent wildlife species, a construction crew was brought in to construct a tidal channel. The first phase of the project entailed building a floating access road over the area to transport heavy equipment to the edges of the marsh. To minimize impact, the crew then began to work their way backwards, digging up the road, moving towards the center of the marsh. The area that temporarily served as a road is now being dredged to create the new marsh channel, allowing tides to flow deep into the marsh, washing out the stagnant pools. Once complete, the restoration area will benefit Ridgeway's rails, the endangered salt marsh harvest mouse, and provide important rearing habitat for coho salmon and steelhead. In partners news, service staff are working with the My School Preschool and other partners in Alturas, California on a schoolyard habitat project that is transforming a vacant lot into an outdoor classroom. Many of the students that attend the preschool do not have outdoor play areas at home, and the service and school staff wanted to provide a safe and interactive way for students to play outside. First, the partner set out to clean the vacant lot and remove trash, including beer cans and broken glass. When it was time for planting, service staff from Modoc National Wildlife Refuge joined teachers, parents, and students to transform the area. While the area is fenced off from the street, the fence was especially designed to allow access for local quail to move into the habitat, allowing students the opportunity to see how new habitat will be used by wildlife. Students from the preschool have named the area the My School Refuge, and they look forward to exploring the area as part of their curriculum. Service staff will continue to create opportunities for children to get outside in a safe environment to learn and explore. That's it for this edition's highlights on Region 8 Roundup. Until next time, I'm Cindy Sandoval.